There are a lot of mathematical theorems that allow us to comment on the world around us without actually relying on experimentation. One such example of a theorem is the borshuk ulam theorem, which states that for any continuous map from the sphere to the plane, there is a point on the sphere such that the image of the map at that point is equal to the image of its antipode. So for instance, by this theorem, at any given point in time, there are two points on opposite sides of the globe that are experiencing the exact same temperature and humidity levels. We're gonna break down much of this theorem, but if you're not happy with how rigorous I'm being, I have written up a handful of notes that goes through and provides the full proof of the theorem. However, I do avoid some of the group theoretic language as I'm not assuming any knowledge of group theory. They are linked in the description below, and if you take a look and have any questions or some feedback for me, go ahead and leave those as a comment on this video. If you enjoy the notes, also let me know because if you enjoy them, I will continue to write them as well. Okay, so let's start building some intuition for what's going on here. First off, we're going to be working on the unit sphere, and we're concerned with the value of our mapping at antipodes, points that are opposite from each other on a sphere. One important type of mapping to keep in mind are those that are antipodal preserving. That is, if we have an antipodal pair on our domain, after we map, we will get another pair of antipodes. In order to think about these things effectively, we're going to have to back up and talk about covering maps and homotopy. First off, a covering map is a mapping between two topological spaces, such that every point in the image space has a neighborhood that is mapped onto by the union of disjoint open sets in the domain space, such that the neighborhood in the image space is homeomorphic to each of the open sets in the domain space that map onto it, and the homeomorphism is given by the restriction of the covering map to one of these open sets in the domain. We should probably visualize that a bit, because that was a lot. Essentially, for each neighborhood in the image space, there are neighborhoods in the domain space that are disjoint and are topologically identical to it. For example, one can show that the squaring map from the circle to itself is actually a covering map. The next item on our list of ingredients is homotopy. In particular, homotopy gives us an idea about how maps can be deformed to one another. So here's the definition. If F and G are continuous maps of the topological space X to the topological space Y, we say that F is homotopic to G if there is a continuous map F of X comma S from the Cartesian product of X with the closed interval from zero to one to Y such that big F of X zero is equal to little f of X and big F of X one is equal to G of X. This big F is called the homotopy between F and G. Essentially what's going on here is that we have some curve that corresponds to F of X in the Cartesian plane given by our space X times our space Y. And with the homotopy, we can deform it continuously to get some curve G of X if F and G are homotopic, that is. At each value of S between zero and one, we get other curves that are in between F and G. And this family of curves gives us a sense of the continuous deformation that we require. For example, if we're looking at a loop that goes around the circle, there is no way to use a homotopy to continuously map that loop to a point on the circle. That is, topologically, there is only space on the circle. So if we want to force the loop down to a point, we're going to have to break it at some point, but that's not allowed. Using the square map and this idea about loops, one can prove the following theorem. If you have a continuous and antipodal preserving map from the circle to itself, you cannot have a homotopy from that map to a constant map. The proof of this theorem is in the notes for this video, which are linked in the description below. Using this fact, we can prove the following theorem. There is no continuous antipodal preserving map from the sphere to the circle. Note that for the following proof sketch, we're gonna use polar coordinates when we talk about things. Suppose that there was such a map. Call it G. It is continuous and antipodal preserving. Then we can think of the equator of the sphere as our circle S1. And let's restrict G to the upper hemisphere of our sphere. The upper hemisphere can be flattened out into a disk. The two are homeomorphic or topologically identical. So we're really thinking about G working on the disk and its boundary. If we restrict G to its boundary, the circle, and rename the mapping H, we know there isn't a homotopy from H to some constant because H is a map from the circle to 
the circle because H preserves antipodes like G did. But we actually do have a homotopy, and we can define it in the following way. Let big G of theta and R be equal to little g of r and theta. Notice that when r is equal to zero, we're evaluating at the center of the disk for any theta. So we get big G of theta and zero is equal to little g of zero and theta, which is equal to little g of zero and zero, which is just a constant. And we have that big G of theta and one is equal to h. But this is a contradiction, because then big G would be a homotopy between H and a constant. But we already know that that can't happen. And so there is no continuous antipode preserving map from the sphere to the circle. This theorem actually allows us to prove the borsuk olam theorem for the sphere. Recall that the borsuk olam theorem says that for any continuous map from the sphere to the plane, there is a point on the sphere such that the image of F at that point is equal to the image of its antipode. We just suppose there isn't one. Then we can define a map like this one. But since f of x is not equal to f of negative x, it is continuous and we can check that it's antipodal preserving for all x on the sphere. But we know this can't happen. So this is a contradiction. So the bursuk ulam theorem holds and we can say things like at any given point in time there are two points on opposite sides of the globe that are experiencing the same exact temperature and humidity levels. Anyhow, I hope that gave you a bit of intuition behind the borsuk ulam theorem for the sphere. If you want to see the math in all of its glory, check out the notes that are linked below. But other than that, that is all I have for you today. As always, I am Nathan, this is Chalk, and I will see you next time.